Then I want to quickly jump upon this and just speak about this because, you know, might as well just get this out of the way. I don't really want to play the interview clips and stuff because we all know why one. But obviously most of you are aware that Ye, the artist formerly known as Kanye West, appeared on InfoWars alongside Nick Fuentes and Alex Jones. It was quite startling to see Nick Fuentes and Alex Jones ever known Milo. But now having learned that Milo and Ye have kind of broke up, I think the, the story going around is that some people from the Kanye kind of fan sites were able no I think no sorry not them people I think it might have been Laura Luma what leaked some DMs that she got from Milo back in the day of him flipping you know insulting Ye and calling him certain terms whatever it may be and then she passed it on to him and I guess they had some communication behind that consequence got involved and eventually Milo ended up parting ways with Ye's presidential campaign but that was the first thing that point I was thinking oh I wonder why um Ye's sitting there with Nick Fentz but not Milo that would be a perfect chance for him to kind of restart his career especially after what he went through and everything else but clearly they're not together anymore and the major thing to come out of this interview isn't the Milo not being there of course it was um, Kanye going on, going completely nuclear on his anti-Semitism world tour, right? His promo tour, trying to kind of, you know, remind people, no, 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 I'm really on that time. You know what I mean? All these words you think I can't say, I'm going to say, which is funny because it reminds me of a child. You know, when you're like a kid first swears and you say, no, no, no don't say that word. And if it's a naughty kid, they'll just like, they'll give you that sinister smile, like, and they'll say it again. That's what Kanye kind of reminds me of. Like, the more you tell him not to say things, the more you end up saying it. So the, if, if people just pretended like, you know, being an anti-Semite wasn't that big of a deal or they just didn't react to the things that he said, he would probably go away. That's the funny thing about it. But I think because the attention is kind of his fuel source and he loves that, it kind of goes the other way. But my hot text to take away from all this, because, you know, we know all the stuff that he said was wrong. We know it was bad, blah, blah, blah. That's all boring. My hot take I've got to take from this is that I feel like it's pretty fun to watch. And I say this only as an outside observer. I say this only as somebody that doesn't know the guy. I'm not his friend. I'm not connected to him in any sort of way. I love his art, music, his fashion, his sneaker design, his stage direction, everything around it, right? I love all that stuff about him. And I'm, and I'm one of those people who can separate the art from the artist. But as just a casual observer from the outside, it is quite interesting to see somebody of his level of celebrity, his level of fame, his level of infamy, his level of monetary success and all that sort of stuff purposely and willfully kind of destroying their career it's pretty cool to see that because there's this term that is bounded around something that i've kind of thought about a lot which i kind of hold in my head a lot about the term the ability to have a, a certain amount of wealth that allows you to say to people to establishments to opportunities whatever it be so you're kind of moved to the beat of your own drum you're not sort of swayed by the decision making decision making processes of big corporations or whatnot. You don't depend on them for your money to pay your rent or to feed your children. You basically are self sufficient in some way, shape, or form to the to the point where you can say fuck you. And I think for the most part we don't see enough people saying fuck you nowadays. It's not necessarily a thing that people do. Everyone's got a brand to protect. Everyone's got relationships to protect, relationships to, you know, uh m massage relationships that they still haven't even you know started the initial conversations about everyone's always kind of really scared about those kind of things you see a lot on twitter where people don't want to write a certain word in a certain way so they use you know apostrophes or they star it because they don't want a fan base to come after them or they don't want just in case that they rip this certain designer another brand might see it and they might google your name and see you said that thing and then they might not get the job all these things everyone's afraid everyone's shook of getting cancelled all this kind of stuff so it's pretty cool to see somebody like a Kanye at his level basically decide I'm not bound by those limitations or those kind of prisons that are put around me as a celebrity and I'm gonna say exactly what I want um to the point where I'm legitimately getting to the point where I'm inciting violence and now we're gonna see how far this celebrity bullshit goes because he's getting to the point where he's gonna start inciting violence we already saw it a tiny little bit with those wild kids I think they were in, I don't know where they were I'm gonna say LA because I think they were trolling, but maybe they weren't, where those kids were standing on an overpass doing the Heil Hitler salute, holding up signs, um, saying they love yay and hate Jude or something crazy like that. So I'm interested to see as a society or as, uh, you know, um, as a global community of people, what actually happens? Like, what's the end point of this? When you have a celebrity of his ilk, of his influence, of his reach, and he keeps saying everything that he wants to say, the way he wants to say it with no real end line in sight what happens next like what's the next thing that happens after this 
that's what i'm curious to see but i also think this made me remind this kind of reminded me of this little clip that i saw of john jones on a podcast speaking about how he would mentally prepare for a francis and garner fight and i felt like this might be something that john figmajiggy that kanye west had in mind when he decided to enter into this phase of his career where he's just saying exactly what he wants he's not being um you know he's not going to be constrained by societal norms or by you know morals or principles or common laws of decency he's just going to say exactly how he feels regardless of who am i offend um who am i upset and what the consequences may may be and deal with the chips as they may fall so this is john jones talking about his game plan with uh, if you, for his perspective fight with francis and Garner. it's very simple get comfortable with the worst case scenario worst case scenario is he knocks you the fuck out he possibly fractures a bone in your face that's the worst case scenario you get real comfortable with that idea and then it becomes easy if he doesn't knock you out and break your face you're smart you're fast you have a chin you have great head movement you know you, you can wrestle you can there's there's a lot of there's a lot of ways things can, things can play out so i just think about the worst case scenario and get yourself mentally to a place where you're almost walking into that like okay i'm getting ready to go out there and this guy could possibly hurt me tonight okay i believe that he has a chance to knock me the fuck out let's say, let's say that out loud but um if i don't get knocked out i believe i win that fight i just gotta get through round one and i win that fight and i feel like that's exactly where Kanye is coming from. He's thinking to himself, what's the worst case scenario here? I lose a deal with Adidas. Mm. It's a big deal because my, you know, my identity and my self-worth is intrinsically tied to being a billionaire, which Adidas essentially allowed me to be. Cool. But I can, I can get that back in some way, shape or form. It doesn't have to be Adidas. It could be Fila. It could be Reebok. It could be Sketches. It could be Timberland. It could be whoever who would kind of, you know, will willingly and happily welcome him back into the fold because there's no denying the guy's blockbuster. Gap deal, the same thing applies to that. Um, relationship with people in the industry doesn't necessarily matter because, you know, if the business is good, the people behind the scenes who manage those people will tell them to do the particular deals. No, none of those guys, be, you know, in the industry have real principles or morals. We're already seeing it with the Balenciaga thing. They don't really stand for anything for the most part. So he knows that can always be rescued. He's things with his friends and family. Does he, he doesn't really strike me as somebody who cares too much about the thoughts and feelings of his friends and family, especially post his mother dying. So maybe he's gone through all of those mental um, exercises in his head and he's got to the point where he knows it's never going to really be that bad because the people that really rock with Kanye, the people that really rock with Ye, they're on his back. There's been some kind of you know uproar and sort of, you know, um, reaction against what he said i saw on the ktt ktt2 forum which is formerly called uh kanye to the yay forum or kanye to the e i think of course i forgot what it's called yeah that one that forum has taken off his artist profile on the little subsection thing you can still find his section but it's kind of been it's kind of harder to click on it um the west sub ever which i thought was the best kanye subreddit that's now been shut down um the other kanye subreddits have eventually been turned into holocaust awareness per um, um subreddits some of them been turned into pseudo taylor swift subreddits because you know she's essentially the opposite of kanye and clearly they have their own little history so i feel like for the most part the actual fans the ones that are diehard kanye the ones who who basically sustained him throughout this entire time anyway the ones who were right who, who have his back regardless they're always going to be there and i think he's finally realized that and he's decided to push it to its extreme and see where it goes so me as a fan who has no real stake or interest in this whatsoever because i'm not really you know my thoughts and feelings aren't swayed or influenced by what a celebrity has to say much so a celebrity tries to come into politics that's one thing that i just have no time for whatsoever you can do your make-believe on stage or behind on the screen you can make your cool songs you can maybe you know um, influence silhouettes and colors and shapes of clothes here and there because you're you've got cool style yourself and you make some cool trainers but trying to talk to the everyday people trying to be you know trying to write policy trying to enact social change from that pulpit is just gross beyond belief so i don't necessarily care what this man has to say about anything and plus he's in america you know doesn't necessarily bother me in the slightest but i'm interested to see how far this goes just from a outsider's point of view how far will it go how much can celebrity let you get away with like for real for real 
obviously to some extent he's not going away with a lot because he'd been monetarily punished but if if all if the only value in life you place is money then obviously he's probably down in the dumps but personally for me i feel like he's in a position if he puts out another sick album if he puts together another sick collection it all changes again it's just as simple as that in life it's much like sports if you are super if you are supremely talented to the point where people can you know latch on their brand latch on their product or services to you to generate more for themselves you are always always going to be of value the moment you lose value is when your talent disappears for any number of reasons but as long as your talent is in act is intact sorry you'll be completely fine and the point and the proof is in the pudding clearly this man you know maybe should be on some sort of medication isn't on it and he's still performing at this level so it clearly shows that as long as he keeps himself on this close to breaking point level he's going to be perfectly fine in terms of his future prospects because i don't necessarily think this really does anything for the most part because this is always going to be the natural end anyway he was going to he was always going to get to a point where he says out loud i love hitler especially with all those kind of press articles that was coming out and hush hush stories van Lathan being one of the first people to go on record and saying he wanted to originally call i think he said the the the, ter- the story was he wanted to call the album that was called um Jesus originally he wanted to call that hitler but obviously he got talked down from it that was back when he was maybe just you know a bit shy of embracing his troll side or his dark side but now he's clearly on that wave but that aside can we also talk one minute about the outfit this legitimately one might be one of the greatest outfits i've ever seen on alex jones or on Infowars ever ever or in the history of flipping television interviews like the holy bible next to him him wearing the demna era um you know veteran jacket with the motocross or well, the bomber yeah the motocross inspired bomber hooded jacket that's flipping incredible and it's a mad grail especially in my collection for me being obsessed with demna then you've also got the verma demna gimp hoodie i'm pretty sure it's not a mask i'm pretty sure that's, that's a hoodie that also comes with gloves i'm pretty sure i'm not too sure if it's the same one but i remember seeing it in one collection i think it's the one where they're walking on tables so this is like a defining era of demna that he's wearing so in a weird way it's him also showing support for his friend demna who's going through a whole heap of madness with Balenciaga and that kid's gate. But it's also him reminding everybody that, you know, he is the freshest out there when it comes to fashion, even when he's, you know, throwing flowers at flipping Adolf Hitler at the same time. Absolutely incredible to watch in real time. Absolutely. To be honest, it really does test your standard if you are a hardcore Yay fan. Like, how far are you willing to go for your fandom? Especially if you're Jewish. <laughs> like, what do you do? Do you put that to one side? Can you separate the art from the artist? Ooh, it's a whole lot of madness. A whole heap of madness. 